Hi, this is Phil Shapiro. I came across a really interesting book published this year, 2017, She Persisted by Chelsea Clinton and Alexandra Boyger. So this is a children's book that is sumptuously illustrated and beautifully written. Let's take a look. Here's the cover. Throughout American history, there have always been women who have spoken out for what's right, even when they had to be fight to be heard. In early 2017, Senator Elizabeth Warren's refusal to be silenced in the Senate inspired a spontaneous celebration of women who persevered in the face of adversity. In this book, Chelsea Clinton celebrates 13 American women who helped shape our country through their tenacity, sometimes through speaking out, sometimes by staying seated, sometimes by captivating an audience. They all certainly persisted. She persisted is for everyone who's ever wanted to speak up but has been told to quiet down, for everyone who's ever tried to reach for the stars but was told to sit down, and for everyone who has ever been made to feel unworthy, unimportant, or small. With vivid, compelling art by Alexander Borger, this book shows readers that no matter what obstacles may be in the past, they shouldn't give up on their dreams. Persistence is power. This is a book for little boys, little girls, and for adult boys and adult girls. So just uh, here is, just shows you how sumptuous this book is. Uh, uh, when Ruby Bridges was in kindergarten, many schools across America, particularly in the South, still refused African-American students their equal right to education. Wouldn't, Ruby wouldn't be treated like a second-class student, and she persisted walking for weeks past angry, hateful protesters to integrate an all-white elementary school in New Orleans. New Orleans. And then on the, on the facing page, that faithful walk to school began a journey, and we must all work together to continue moving forward. So that's a quote. Um, I'm not going to tell you about the other women in the book, because you should go and get this book yourself. Some of them are people you've heard of, and some you might not have heard of. I found there were some women in this book that I hadn't heard of, and that was excellent. Let me learn something new. This is the last page of the book, so beautifully done. So if anyone ever tells you no, if anyone ever says your voice isn't important, or your dreams are too big, remember these women. They persisted, and so should you. Now, there's two women that I think should have been included in this book, and you probably have never heard of either of them but I'm going to tell you about them today. I'm entitled to do that. I'm doing the book review. This is one of the women. Her name is Catherine Wright. She's the little sister of the Wright brothers. You never heard about her. You never heard about her, but she was the manager of the household after the Wright brothers' mother passed away, and she was managing the whole project, the whole invention of the airplane, the Wright brothers used to write her letters when they were in North Carolina, and she was kind of running the show. History left her out of the history books, so this excellent historian, Richard Maurer, wrote a book about Catherine Wright, and you should go and read that book. You can maybe find secondhand copies of the book on Amazon.com, um, or check around in public libraries in your area, they might be, uh, or school libraries. The title of the book is The Right Sister, and the author is Richard Maurer, M-A-U-R-E-R. -E so this woman should maybe be in that book. She persisted. Uh, she was very supportive of her brothers, and they might not have had success without uh, her being part of this family project. The other person I wanted to tell you about, who belongs in the book, is a classroom teacher in California. Her name is Sarah Puglisi, P-U-G-L-I-S-I. -I. I, I hope I'm getting that right. And I came across her blog. I do a lot of reading work at the public library. And as, as I'm reading this blog post that she wrote in 2010, as I'm reading it, I could hear the voices of Marion Wright Edelman and Fannie Lou Hamer and Rosa Parks so I'm, uh, uh, Sarah has written a hundred national standards, which she believes 
ought to be education standards, and I'm going to read them. Uh, it's going to take a little while, but I think it's going to be worth your time. It's okay if you don't make it to the end, but that just means that you didn't persist. Here's her 100 national standards. Number one, all children should know love. Number two, all children should know that they have a bed to sleep in tonight and next week and for their life. Three, all children should have adequate, even delicious food and know all about their food. Four, all children should have support within the walls of their homes. Five, all children should have the experience of play. Let me get my mouse over here. Six, all children should know nature, value nature, interact within nature, and be in families that have some capacity to do the same. Seven, all children should know, have, and be able to be friends. Eight, all children should have clothes to wear that keep them, help keep them warm and express their beauty. Nine, all children should feel that their family is accepted and is of value. Ten, all children should learn language, learn to speak by finding their word, their world, one that enjoys communication. The more languages that they know, the more broadened the understanding. 11. All children should have health and dental care that their families are not fearful about or simply can't afford or have, and no illness cannot bankrupt them. They need health care that attends to their well-being. 12. All children should be regarded as potentially and individually and instantly a part of whatever cosmic beauty, goodness, whatever we wish to call it, that exists, and as such is the reason we all live with hope and possibility. 13. All children should be permitted to listen to adults that are permitted to think. 14. All children should be assured of school, fair school, schools where we do not reinforce unfair notions that already existed at birth. Like, if your family has more, or lives in some piece of real estate, or is somehow smarter or edging out another, then your, your school will be better. This unfortunately underpins the current national policy. That even includes the president. Whoever they are, every child deserves a very nice school. Not a me, then everyone else educational model. Check out Finland. 15. All children should have books. Libraries are great. I second that. All children should have toys, but maybe one's parents make as well as buy. 17. All children should have parents, family, neighbors, mentors that make things. 18. All children should have systems at work within their lives that build healthy communities, seeing them as the reason the community exists. 19. All children should have adults that can cooperate, hear one another, resolve conflict, have the capacity to demonstrate love, attention, concern, solutions, turn-taking, and deference. 20. All children should have paper, pencils, crayons, scissors, sprinkles, cookies, cups, cans, materials, glue, paste, making, and doing. 21. All children should have adequate sleep and rest. 22. All children should have music every form, in utero on, to listen to and sing to, inquire to play, as a part of life, as a part of study. 23. All children should be involved in learning projects. 24. All children should know transportation systems to get them around safely. 25. All children should enjoy celebrations, the most important at least once per year a celebration of that child and a value to our life. 26. All children should begin the process of literacy, not as a race, but as a right, a joy and exploration and a normal function. 7. All children should enter school believing and maintaining as long as possible a joy in learning and a belief in self as not behind, not labeled, not seen as less. All children should experience lives without bullies, and when there are bullies, teasing cruelty, be able to easily find resources that the support, the fairness to have access to help, to be heard. 
29. All children should know technology. 30. All children should be given opportunities to demonstrate understandings. 31. All children should be given opportunities to demonstrate, uh, oops, all children should learn within family and cook school to cook and care for their food. 32. All children should be served food at school that is interesting, fresh, well-made, delicious, and not frozen, rebaked cultural wasteland. 33. All children should be allowed to respect, care about, and return to teachers as important to their lives. They should know Mrs. P may well be in the same school in her room waiting 20 years later to see you again. 34. All children should have time with the adults that conceived them. Daycare should be an option that is last on the list. 35. All children should be allowed comfortable school furniture. Very comfortable. 36. All children should do more each day in a school than they sit or rarely, rarely be engaged in passive workbooking. 37. All children should be educated in reasonable, perhaps even outrageously small groups so that each child can and does get the care they need, no more than 15. 38. Children should have opportunities to draw, color, illustrate, print, make, dye, batik, sketch, paste, cut, collage, design, sparkle, explore, respond within art so that they have experienced quality materials and competent artists actively. Real papers, real crayolas, real inks, paints that allow them to become human through art and not bought by their underpaid teacher. 39. All children need to hear the big pictures, even when we are still engaged in understanding the big pictures. 40. All children should learn about their bo brain, body systems, and how they work. 41. All children should see the differences in cultures, people, societies, as opportunities to become aware and to be amazed. 42. All children should find mathematics from the time they hold the concept of three until they are fully grown as a part of everything we do, that mathematics has history, context, thought, theory, and that they can find themselves perfectly a part of the understanding of this within its forms and function, male or female, rich or poor. I'm pleased this worked out to be number 42. 43. All children should learn to observe, should learn this within natural settings. 44. All children should be engaged in science. 45. All children should know animals, their care, to care for animals, support, raise, and love them, and understand as well as the cycle of life. All, 46. All children should know schools that support all of the above and fight for these things ahead of anything else. 47. All children should run on beaches and grass, have playgrounds, feel forest floors, fly kites, gather leaves, Cross streets safely, visit fire stations, meet the police in nice days to learn about hard jobs with the ability to ask them about their work. Go to groceries, learn about money, see movies, roll down hills, sled, walk by crocus, talk to grandpas and grandmas, collect and recycle, play cards, take turns, have dice, play Candyland, do dance, gymnastics, try water slides, learn swimming safety, go to farms, pet animals, cut pumpkins, smell pine, Wash the floor with a friend, have chores, taste baked bread, knead dough, water plants, grow seeds, take care of fish, walk in line, put on shows, sing with friends, flop on the floor, use blocks, without feeling anything but how good all of that feels. 48. All children should develop constructs of learning that set and achieve goals with the child involved. 49. All children should be read to and start to read in a lap in a house or a home. 50. All children should be cleaned, bathed, cared for as if they were a joy. 51. All children should have shoes. 52. All children should have coats or sweaters, gloves, hats, and people that care whether or not they are wearing them or have them, and possibly make for them. Make them for them. 53. All children should have rules, limits, safety nets, systems, understandable patterns, routines, mentors, and those that love them well enough to have flexibility and judgment in using them ahead of rigidity and power. 54. Children should be able to learn about work. 55. Children should learn about how their society functions in terms of monies, jobs, labor, roles, learning of others and their situation, 
and within something hard to define with open minds with introduction of the complexity in society, the stratification. 56. All children should feel that their family has capacity, intelligence, worth, and intrinsic value. 57. All children should sometimes ask and receive. 58. All children should sometimes cope with a no. 59. All children should have sharing time, if possible, far longer than adults teaching them want to tolerate. 60. All children should be allowed to wash their hands before eating after playtime as a normal experience. 61. All children should attend schools, live in houses with adequate facilities to know a toilet, a bath, a way to clean clothes, and enjoy being clean. 62. All children should live in a world where if mental illness affects the family, there are ways to have, find, sustain help for them and not drown. 63. All children should have band-aids, both the real things and the metaphorical kind, to heal. 64. All children should be able to hear stories of kith and kin, hear other children's stories, and grow within structures that value these experiences of our story above all else. 65. All children should move and dance. 66. All children should know sport. 67. All children should watch Reading Rainbows once a week well through 8th grade. 68. All children should learn to build a fire, how to use a compass, how to set up a tent, ways to safely do the things that ensure our survival, taught in ways that don't frighten but do allow them confidence and maturation. Camp. They should all go to camp and all children need a trip to the nation's capital and to museums. 69. All children should skip a stone over a pond, catch and cook a fish, throw back more than they catch, no snow, understand seasons, begins to feel the earth under their feet, be taught the earth's movement, time, the countering system with contacts that engage them fully in experiential learning. 70. All children should make large sidewalk drawings in chalk. 71. All children should make presentation displays, have fairs and experiences to present to families that come, watch, interact, appreciate, and value as community experience. 72. All children should learn about feelings. 73. All children should make, have, use puppets, experience, drama, and plays. 74. All children should find that they are valued for their opinion, and asked why, and expected to be heard as well as listened to another. 75. All children should have literacy as a foundational right, have books, be the center of educational experiences, find what they read, experience within words to be valued as hi highly as possible. 76. All children need access and understanding of history, timelines, historical figures, historical perspectives, historical understandings of things we have learned from both our successes but also our mistakes. 77. All children should write, read, and engage with poetry and listen to the Youth Poet Laureate. 78. All children should respect their own learning and understand that their achievements help them individually to evolve, not to better over others, but to become fully alive, and thus of value to others. 79. All children should learn about the systems of religion, philosophy, schools of thought. 80. All children should learn about death. In caring ways, we should allow them to develop their understanding so that they are not paralyzed by both their fears, but the realities, realities they will face. 81. All children should have a backpack. 82. All children should look forward to each day. 83. All children should be allowed to wear hats. Sunglasses, too. 84. All children should have some place to do their homework and someone that cares to talk about it with them. Uh, the place of the homework needs to be a little quiet, please. No, no television. No television, loud television, please. That's my addendum. All children should find their talents and learn to use their strengths, understanding as well as their weaknesses. 86. All children should laugh. 87. All children should watch the sky, value weather, learn about the earth, be engaged in the atmosphere, understand water tables, be aware of these systems, how these systems work. 88. All children should learn to answer a phone safely and intelligently. 89. All children should write in a multiplicity of ways all day as part of understanding as a tool. 90. All children should one day look up in their classroom and rather than seeing an authority in their watch, their teacher mode, see a president or an ed secretary or other important folks looking in on all they are doing, valuing their learning, finding that within community to see as right in their learning. 
91. All children should take turns and know they will have a turn. 92. All children should understand that if they do work, try, show themselves to be willing to learn, make mistakes and process them, that they can enter into fields they choose, that no door is closed because they are not rich, that they should understand careers and opportunities and their roles, as well as community roles in seeing them into the future. It should not be a mystery. 93. All children, when they fall, need a helping hand. 94. All children should feel that they work within dynamics that see success over failure. 95. All children should know the warmth of a heater, the light of a bulb, the luxury of air conditioning in rooms over, overheated. Over 80, sorry. All children should see the value in these comforts and fully understand that is it is provided to them. 96. All children should get gifts. 97. All children should make and give cards and gifts as expressions of thankfulness and connection. 98. All children should have a blog in a child-safe atmosphere. 99. All children should learn within local settings that help to set goals and standards and to maintain ways to oversee this. 100. All children should be integrated, rich, poor, black, white, restricted by disability, glasses-wearing, free-thinking, Republican household, Democratic, representing every color, creed, view, and from such a base, learn about self and others to the best of our ability, to mix ourselves together within community, neighborhood, nation, to think of such things as more important than writing a bunch of standards and thinking that was the same as doing all of the above. So now you can understand why I think uh, Sarah Puglisi belongs in this book. She persisted. So... She's uh, somebody we can learn from. So, and now if you found this book review useful or interesting, you can find more of my book reviews at sites like google.com slash site. Phil Shapiro book reviews. There'll be a link in the description of this video. Here's my contact information. And I'll see you all next time. This is a highly recommended book. Please ask your public library, your school library, to buy a copy. And do me a favor. Buy a copy and put it in your little free library, the one that's down the street. If you don't have one, build one. Or organize with your neighbors to build a little free library on your street. 